Guys, it's a good day. Sun is shining, 65 degrees, and I've got BMW's flagship superbike right here in front of me. We have a 2021 S1000 Double R in the M package and premium package in front of us. Check out the little M badging right there. Check out the carbon fiber wheels. I'm not sure you can see those uh, on the camera, but believe me when I tell you, they're beautiful in the carbon fiber. Heated grips, cruise control, 207 horsepower, all that good stuff. This thing is actually really cool. And I know you guys are mad at me because I say BMWs are soulless and boring and awful, but I've gotten the chance to ride this thing quite a bit. I've got quite a story to tell you guys today of how I broke in this motorcycle and how I've been riding it a lot and how my opinion has changed a teensy bit on the S1000RR. Not a lot. I still think it's a little soulless, a little boring, but stick around. Today's video is going to be a good one because we're doing a full ride and review on this S1000 Double R. We're going to find out, is it a good street bike? Is it fast? Is it fun? What can you do with it? And what's it like to live with? And how does it compare to other motorcycles like it in this flagship superbike category? We're talking about stuff like the Ducati V4S, V4R, R1M, uh, Honda Fireblade. I've ridden all those motorcycles, so I'll give you guys the ins and outs. But the biggest thing about this bike, of course, giveaway motorcycle. Yes, 2024, the Yam is providing once again to you the opportunity to own some superlative machines. Head over to yamadoob.co right now. We're doing 20x entries for our launch week. You're not going to want to miss it. This thing is really cool. Um, it's if, if you just want like a super fast, badass leader bike for the street, I'm going to save you guys the whole review. Just get this one. This is the best one to get. I will explain why in the video, but it's just, just stop thinking. If you're just a street bike leader squid, this is the one to get. This is the one you want. So head over to the store, link in the description down below, 20X entries for every dollar you spend. Don't miss it. Now let's get into it. So this is a 2021 BMW S1000 RR. The reason it's a 2021 is because number one, that's the model year and when it was made, <laughs> obviously. But the reason I bought a 2021 is because this motorcycle was such a screaming good deal. I got it for about $21,000 if I remember correctly, and that is a steep, steep uh, drop in price because the previous owner, if you can believe it, only put 200 miles on this motorcycle. You would notice it's sitting at 582 on the odometer. That is because your sweet papa yam had to break this motorcycle in in order to unlock the full RPM range. You cannot get this motorcycle to rev past about 9,000 RPM unless you do the whole 600 miles BMW uh, service and all that good stuff. So with all that being said, your sweet papa yam has put down some miles. Let's go take it for a rip, shall we? Let's get a startup and hear how she sounds, folks. <laughs> Silky smooth M line four breathes to life here. Let's get a quick rev. There is a valve down in there in the cat somewhere, and whenever you actually get this thing on the boil, it will open up a little bit and allow you to hear it. Let's get out of the way of this gigantic 18 wheeler that's backing up out of my way of getting out of here. I'll make sure to be able to exit. go. How you doing? Pop right here on the stop sign. Let's start riding this bike, shall we? Okay. Well, first, if you guys saw the launch video, you already know a little bit of what I think about this bike. But the thing you got to know is BMW thoroughly understands what people actually want to do with their super bikes. This is bar none the comfiest, the easiest to get along with, the simplest leader bike to ride that you can go get. If you just want to go out and do this sort of thing with the bike, just want to get on it and rip first gear, that's the kind of stuff you want to do, this is the one to get. This is hands down the comfiest bike to ride, the nicest bike to ride, and it just has all the creature comforts going for it, man. It's so sick. It's so good. I don't even want to take it on track, honestly. Gonna take a little detour here so we can hit these twisties. It's incredibly agreeable. It's got all the tech you could want. Heated grips, cruise control. I had to do 374 miles in one single day with this bike. And any other super bike, I would have been like, I'm about to have a terrible day. That was about 
seven hours of riding because I didn't just want to sit around on the highway with this thing. And I was actually really enjoying it. I was able to go out and do like a proper sport touring ride with it, which was super cool. <laughs> I never would have imagined that you could do something like that with a bike like this and not just hate yourself. Now look, I'm not going to lie, there are way better tools for that job. I would have much rather been on an adventure bike or a sport touring bike, but if you, if you really want no compromises, boy this bike gets close. This bike gets real close. So what are we working with? 998cc inline four cylinder engine making 207 horsepower and about 87 foot pounds of torque. This thing revs to I think 13 and a half thousand RPM. It doesn't quite reach 14. I think you can with the over rev but it's got broad linear power. And I say that a lot about bikes, but this one does a lot because it has the shift cam technology. I won't get into the ins and outs of that technology, but I really advise you guys to go and check it out because it's really cool. It basically allows the motorcycle to have better power down low and up top. It's a little bit of wizardry brought to you by BMW. And the other thing I can say about this bike is, man, you can tell, much like a Honda, this is from a manufacturer that makes a lot of vehicles. It feels super different than a Triumph or an MV Agusta or even a Ducati where you can tell it's just lower volume and that's not a bad thing. I love Triumphs, I love MV Agustas and you guys know I love Ducatis. But boy, you can just feel the economies of scale coming through on this machine. You can sense this is a brand that makes so many vehicles because everything feels so good. <laughs> you can tell it's just so buttoned up and pulled together. This is the type of machine that is really enjoyable just from the sense that you can tell how well it's built. If you like that sort of thing in a Honda, I think you'd really enjoy a BMW. I really do because this is a type of bike that I think Honda people would really appreciate. There's, I think, a lot of overlap between BMW people and Honda people because they want the bikes that aren't necessarily the flashiest, the craziest, but just they know are going to work day in and day out and just be ultra buttery smooth. And I got to say, this chassis for the road, this suspension setting for the road, it's by the way, electronically adjustable suspension. Of course, we got it on the M package here. Really nice touch. I mean, this is all coming together for such a nice road bike. Truly, such a good, ample powered street motorcycle that is truly a joy to use. However, <laughs> I did tell you guys, I, I, I'm willing to change my mind a little bit, but not too much on the BMW here, because it's still a little cold to me, you know? It is so buttery smooth and vibration free that when you ride it, it does end up feeling a little video gamey. And that's not a bad thing. If you want the super ultra refined experience, this is still the bike to get. This thing's awesome. But I think that if you're looking for something that's gonna kind of give you a little bit of that pizzazz and wonder factor, I don't know if it does it, but man, it works so good. That engine, it's, I don't even know. It's like a Honda Fireblade engine, but just somehow even smoother and just so silky. <laughs> it's so silky the way it pulls. Ah, it's a very confidence inspiring machine, but like other modern day super bikes, get on the porky side, you know? I think 440 something pounds on this bad boy, which, uh, you know, I think for a street bike, if you're just tooling around, kind of heavy. For a, for a sport track bike, very heavy, honestly. I like sub 400 for my proper dedicated track bikes and those sort of things. Let's have some fun, amp up the pace here a little bit on this back road, keep it in second. You can't use hardly any of this machine. It is wickedly fast. This is about as comfortable as I feel on street with this. If we were on closed conditions, we could obviously have a whole lot more fun, but you see there we got a ravine and no guardrail, so we're running a nice careful pace with this. Electronically controlled suspension, dials things in on the fly, ride-by-wire throttle is one of the better ones I've felt, to be honest. Very enjoyable to use, very tactile, it feels very direct, the on-off is really nice, that's something I look for in a motorcycle is feeling that on-off throttle. Let's see here, I'll put it up in a fourth. We'll just kind of roll into it, lay off of it, on the brakes, down one gear, 
back in you, you don't even notice it crack back open it's super nice to use and you can dial the modes in too it's like an r1m where you can go in and configure everything i've got it in road mode right now because well i'm on the road and i wanted to see how that would feel and i just got this thing uncorked literally yesterday this is my first time riding it uncorked because i didn't want to ride it all limited for you guys because i think that would have just been really really boring and sad for you wouldn't it to ride an s1000 that you can't even rev past 9000 rpm and to the gentleman who owned this bike before me if you're watching the video i'd love to hear your story as to why you bought this bike and you put a blue windshield on it and a random slip on exhaust and you only rode it for 200 miles and then you sold it must have been a case where they wanted a very different motorcycle and they were just trying out the bmw and then quickly realized it's not for them because this bike is not for the faint of heart I will say, as comfortable as it is, as nice as it is to ride, for a guy that really enjoys sport bikes and is willing to put up with the BS that sport bikes offer, it is still a sport bike. It is still a leader bike. It is still cramped on here. You're not going to sit on this and think, wow, Africa Twin, Tenere 700. I, I feel awesome on this thing. <laughs> it's still a super committed bike, and it's very much designed to go tear up racetracks. But overall, a very well executed machine that you can really kind of boogie with on the daily. All right, we're gonna cruise down this road a little bit, get back onto some open highways. Let's feel the power on the BMW S1000 RR because we gotta crack it open a little bit more. Let's go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll just chuck it into race mode. Why not? What does it do? Go race mode, baby. <laughs> Throttle feels a little sharper. So smooth, dude. Oh my god. Gonna crack this baby wide open. See what she do. That's fun. <laughs> That was really weird though. I was perfectly straight up and down and I kind of cracked open the throttle and I didn't feel like I got much. I think it kind of wastes to be like, are you sure you want wide open at 5,000 RPM? You're clearly not racing if that's the case. You should never be that low in the RPMs if you're racing the thing. Uh, so maybe that's BMW's way of telling me that I, I suck and I shouldn't be doing that. But we'll see if we can get a light here and crack this baby open because we have a bunch of traffic now which is the uh, non-ideal ah perfect we got a light up there we'll be able to filter and uh and take away german sauerkraut take away that's what we're doing just gotta watch for people doing those last minute lane changes just gonna roll it out That's leader bike power, man. What a rush. Very stable. Lovely controlled wheelie all through first gear. I don't know if you guys saw that. That was super nice. It just let me hover that front wheel the whole time. I felt like a superstar. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. Y'all who don't like sport bikes, you gonna tell me that's not fun? I don't want it all the time, but sheesh. Yeah, come on, that's freaking awesome. This thing's got so, so much power. <laughs> so much top end rush. What I like about it too is the gearing is better than the Honda Fireblades. The Honda Fireblade has this just atrociously long first gear. You feel like you can't even really even use first gear because you're like, what am I supposed to do with this thing? It ends at 94 miles an hour. I think this thing is geared a little bit better. I don't know about the final drive on it, but um, it just feels like a much better gearbox in terms of the internal gear spacings uh, over the Fireblade, for example. It feels much more like the R1, uh, not the V4R. That one also has some pretty long legs, but that's just because it revs at 16 and a half thousand RPM. 
Um, and that's gonna, yeah, you know, you can put the gears you want, it's still gonna feel really, really, really long when you're running to 16,000 RPM. But yeah, really enjoyable. Again, all the inputs, so nice on this thing. You know, the braking feel is tremendous. Um, it's extremely stable and usable. Super nice motorcycle that if you're about speed, if you're about this life, I, you know what, I get it, dude. I get it. This is the one to get. Why would you get anything else? Because you genuinely can live with this motorcycle. This can be an everyday bike. This can be the bike you use for, you know, bopping around, I guess. Like, it's not that bad. It definitely makes a case for itself, which is extremely impressive. And come on, in this paint job? I mean, I'm not, I'm honest to God, I'm not much of a BMW guy. I really am not. I've never, never liked their cars very much. Certainly didn't like their bikes very much. Um, I think the paint job looks cool. I think it's a really sweet looking ride, a good complete package. It definitely has its own thing going for it. I think that it's not trying to be anything else. It's, it's aggressive, but it's also, the guy's eating takeout right in his car. What you eat? What you eating, dude? What you got? What you got in the box, bro? What's it? What's he eating? Oh, some munch on some food. <laughs> people are crazy, man. You got people literally eating takeout while they're driving. And, uh, and we're the problem. We're the dangerous ones, right? No hands on the steering wheel. Both hands eating takeout. Crazy. Anyways. Yeah, it carves its own thing. It definitely has its own unique identity. This screen, best in the biz. No doubt about it. There is no better screen than what BMW is doing right now. It's running at like 240 frames a second. All of it hurts. It's, it's so smooth. Look at the tech. It's, everything just looks so nice on the screen. And it's really nice to use if you're using it as a daily bike because you have something really nice to look at, you know? I always love that on my Daytona 675R when I had it for street duty many, many years ago. You'd look down and between the carbon fiber and the blue tipped Olins, and the dash, it was just, it was a pleasant thing to look at. And I guess in my age, I like nice things, man. I like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna drop this kind of money on a bike, it has to feel good when you're on it, you know? You gotta feel happy about it. And I think you'd feel pretty darn happy with these carbon wheels, this paint job. It definitely feels special. It does not feel cheap. It feels really good to be on this bike. And look at this. Chuck it down into third. You get this nice little burble from the exhaust. You guys hear that? I'm gonna roll off again. Super nice. And you can just cruise around. Totally cruise. Frick, I'm gonna turn on cruise control, why not? Can I do it this low in the RPMs? Why not? Look at that, 30 miles, 35 miles an hour. Just cruising along. No problem at all. Really nice. Let's see if we can turn. Ugh, turn, turn, <laughs> turn, little BMW. Yes, using heart, body, and mind to turn. <laughs> Feels just like a bicycle. I'll turn that off. Anyways, cruise control works really, really well. Super enjoyable. Uh, everybody needs to do cruise control like this. Aprilia, if you're listening for the love of God, please do it like this. It's easier to understand now than it used to be, but I don't know why Aprilia's cruise control confuses the hell out of me. This one's great. It's just like the, the CF Moto or any other cruise control. You turn it on. Set and res, just like every other user control, works great. Really nice to use. Heated grips, man, game changer on a super bike. From the factory, you get heated grips and cruise control. Ducati doesn't do those things because they believe that if you're buying a Panigale, it, it by, by like, by law and by distinction, it shouldn't come with cruise control and heated grips because that's not what the bike was designed to do. But again, BMW understands this market better than anybody else right now. They know that the vast majority of people buying these motorcycles are not serious track day warrior types. They are people who are going to be riding around on the street, enjoying the motorcycle, doing their own thing, and not necessarily going out and ripping up laps and track days. And if you want to do that sort of thing, they sell the M1000RR, which is that really superlative kind of track day special motorcycle that's a little bit more hardcore and tuned in and dialed in to do that sort of thing. So I think BMW's product offerings are really cool right now, honestly. 
I think the entire S1000 line is really interesting. You guys will know I have a bit of a soft spot right now for the XR. I'm kind of still debating if I'm gonna buy that motorcycle as my new all-arounder, my do-everything motorcycle, because as many of you know, I'm paring down the stable. And I think this motor and this platform is just really great. Honestly, it's really, really great. I think it has a lot going for it over the Japanese competition. You know, I, I think, a, I don't even think, I don't even think, when you're looking at S1000RR, you're not even in the same ballpark as a, a Jix or a ZX10. We're not even going to consider those. Really, we're talking about Honda Fireblade, R1M. Both are good. Both are different than this thing. And I think that for the street guy, get the S1000RR. The big question you have to ask yourself is, am I going to go Aprilia or am I going to go Ducati versus the BMW? And I think that going BMW is going to save you a little bit of headaches from a maintenance perspective. I think Ducati and Aprilia still have some weirdnesses around them that are not the best. Um, this motorcycle, I, I think, just has everything dialed in, man. This thing feels fantastic. And again, those economies of scale that BMW has is unique, you know? It can use parts bin specials. It can use R&D development, excuse me, R&D budget from their motorsports and vehicle departments into the BMW. Now, has that translated into a bunch of fantastic world superbike wins and hell, are they in MotoGP? Yeah, and what about BMW's racing prowess? It's not great, honestly. I'll, I'll be totally honest with you guys. In, in terms of on-road two-wheeled vehicles, uh, as of late, the last 20 years or so, BMW has been nowhere in the conversation. Uh, you know, famously, BMW for the 2009 S1000RR, they used this, the K6 uh, Jixer as a reference point, or the K5, I can't remember. It was largely based on that bike when they were first developing this platform. It's come a long way since then. It's not nearly the same thing as it was anymore, but you know, that gives you an idea of what BMW was thinking and what they wanted the bike to be like whenever they first developed it. Because that was a very competitive motorcycle and that did a lot of damage back in the AMA days, especially here in America. Um, so I think BMW still has their work cut out for them from the motorsports perspective. Uh, the Yamaha and the Ducati are a better package in World Superbike right now. The Yamaha is nicer to ride. Doesn't do as many weird things as BMW because BMW uses their own electronics in World Superbike. So it's just that they have their own thing going on with the bike that's very, very different. And then nobody can touch the V4R right now. That bike is on another planet. But we'll see, maybe Toprak this coming year can do something cool with the BMW and maybe that's the final piece they needed was just a, a big top tier talent to take the bike and drag it up to the podium Marquez style like he did with Honda. BMW's only uh, you know presence in the MotoGP grid and paddock is as the BMW M car sponsor. So like you guys will see when the when the race starts, it's always a BMW M car. So they get a little publicity there. There are no BMWs in MotoGP and there never have been as far as I'm aware. Uh, I'm a pretty big MotoGP buff, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think BMW has ever participated in Grand Prix on-road motorcycle racing. And so this product, it has tie-ins to motorsport because BMW obviously has the M branding on it. Everybody recognizes the M branding from the M3s and the M4s, all those cars. And so I think the normie sees a BMW motorcycle and they see the M on it. They go, oh shit, it's the performance version. Like, yeah, all ties in, all makes sense. I think that's great for BMW. Gosh, there's no waiting for the power. That shift cam technology is really neat. It can be at freaking 4,000 RPM on an inline four and it just pulls like a twin. There's a lot of power here. <laughs> this is a fast, fast motorcycle. I want you guys to understand how fast this motorcycle is. You cannot use this on public roads and like really juice the throttle. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to a racetrack. This is so much bike. Downsides for me, the mirrors are at certain RPM quite vibrational and difficult to see out of. Um, it tends to be a little bit lower in the revs or a little bit higher in the revs. They get a little buzzy and hard to see. Uh, maybe that's just me, but I'm looking, I'm looking right now back in the mirrors and it just everything's really distorted and fuzzy just because it's vibrating so much. But weirdly enough, there's not much buzz and vibration in the handlebars. Um, I think they've tuned that out in some way <laughs> as, we, as we check to see how much travel the BMW has when I slammed into two potholes. Um, 
and yeah, like through the handlebars, through the foot pegs especially, I feel nothing. I feel I feel hardly anything through the foot pegs. I feel a soft buzzing through the gas tank here, which is a very nice shape, by the way. Despite this motorcycle being a little bit larger, it's shaped really well. I really like the shape of it. It's just missing some tank grips for me personally, but I might add those onto this thing as I'm gonna put quite a bit of miles on it as a giveaway bike, because I think I deserve it. I already put 375 on it to uncork it and unlock it for you guys. I would like to continue that and continue riding it and enjoying it on the street because uh, it is a lot of fun. Definitely gives you that hand of God, Exodia, Godzilla feeling when you're on it. You're like, who the hell is going to keep up with me? This is the fastest thing on the road at any given time. You will be able to walk 99.999% of vehicles. I think quite literally you'd have to see the one out of 10,000 cars or bikes that will be able to pass or keep up with you. This thing is viciously fast. It's effortlessly fast, man. Even low in the revs, it piles on speed like crazy. There's been some times where I pile on the speed and I have to really jump on the brakes, activate that front ABS a little bit, and I'm like, ooh, am I gonna stop in time? Because I didn't even realize I was going so damn fast on this thing. The heated grips are a really nice touch. Um, a really, really nice touch. I, uh, I think all bikes should come with heated grips, and your superlative BMW Superbike should absolutely come with heated grips. But yeah, I, I think the max setting for the heated grips is like two. Honestly, at setting number three, it genuinely feels like my hands are on a griddle. They are super hot, um, which would be great if you're riding in sub-zero conditions, but I think if it's, uh, if it's like 15 degrees Fahrenheit outside or like minus 10 Celsius, Hey, maybe leave the bike at home, you know? Maybe you don't have to go and ride your super bike when it's that cold outside. That's just me. That's, I don't know. That's just me. You don't. You can do whatever you want, but I think, you know, that would be what I would do. So over the rougher pavement here, it handles it really well, honestly. Like, it's a stiff chassis. You can tell it's stiff. But the undulations, like this little bit right here, I know this road pretty well. It's got this weird diamond pattern in the road. You feel that. But it's not feeling unsettled. Really nice. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's pull over and let's render a final opinion on the BMW S1000RR, shall we? Let's do that. That sounds like a nice thing to do for it. And we can get out of race mode, too. You know what's funny is I find myself really wanting to, like, ride this motorcycle like a normal human being. Maybe that's just because I'm getting older. I'm 31 years old now, so maybe that's, that's my time. All right, BMW S1000 RR. What do I make of it, guys? This thing's great. <laughs> this thing's great for the street bike guy who just wants to tool around, have a super fast, cool-looking bike. I, I think you're done here, dude. I think this is the one to get. Honestly, I've ridden a lot of them: the CBRs, the Fireblade, the R1M, the V4R. They're all really compromised. This thing. Look at that, look at that rider triangle. You know, it's aggressive, but it's not crazy. The seat height, it's not crazy. If you're used to more sporty bikes, you'll jump on this and say, wow, I actually, I can get along with this thing. I can live with this thing. I'm gonna rate it a 9.3 out of 10 as a street bike. Fantastic motorcycle, really enjoyed riding it. Gonna continue to enjoy riding it because it's a giveaway motorcycle. We have it for a limited time only. So head over to Yamini.co and get your chances ready to win this thing. 20X entries here for launch week. Don't miss your chance. This thing is gonna go to one of you guys out there. We've given away 50 motorcycles in the past. Half a million dollars worth of prizes doled out to lucky fans just like you. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Oh, I love being here inside of the warm embryonic fluid of Valentino Rossi. Me and him just sharing foods together. Maybe he's gonna eat some pizza or some pasta here in the hills of Tavulia. But you know where else it's nice and warm and cozy is this next episode of Yami Noob you can click on right over here. I'd love for you to watch it. But anyways, I'm gonna stay here hanging out. Me and him might go onto the track later, but I'll catch you guys later.